Welcome back to the Happy Hour. Steve Moskowitz is here, as always, on a Thursday to talk a little sports and My the law. My favorite day of the week. Your favorite day of the week. We're all, fortunately, not in jail after a, a night See? of celebrating and partying the, you know, our America's birthday, 4th of on July. Speed dial, just in case. Just in case. Ray definitely has you on speed dial. Really? No question. He, he got crazy last night. 1 800, 1 -800 so bail money. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, some interesting stories going on uh, locally and abroad. Uh, we know with the uh, salary tax and uh, the Warriors are soon to be um, hit with a big bill, but we OKC right now, currently after signing Raymond Felton to a one year, $2.4 million deal, is going to be responsible to pay $150 million in taxes this coming season, which is a record that the Warriors will likely break. Um, but in terms of how this works with the NBA and the luxury tax, uh, explain to and me how... And the fines if you don't pay enough. Yeah, and the fines. How teams are able to continue to spend the kind of money they do with that kind of a bill. That's easy. It's just one, it's not really a tax. The government isn't collecting it. What it really is, is just the cost of doing business, like the rent, like any other expenses, you think it was part of payroll. And what happens, for example, LeBron went to L.A. and boom, the ticket prices come up. That's what all businesses do. If you don't make enough, you just raise the prices. And again, they don't seem to have any problem filling the seats, not to mention the TV and everything else. Um, so if, if that is indeed the case, what we're talking about here is a willingness to pay, not an inability to pay. Oh, and that is with most of the cases. I mean, even if you look at big businesses are very wealthy people it, oftentimes they have lots and lots of money billy gates has the ability to pay lots but he wouldn't pay a penny more than he had to for any type of expense he's got a whole team of guys like me that say no i can't do this can't do that does the fact that you call him billy indicate that there's a relationship here deeper than just <laughs> there might be but are i wouldn't be able to taxes? tell you well once again i wouldn't be able to tell you attorney client privilege mm -hmm. well we know that the nba obviously uh, extended a credit line for teams but is this a tax write-off? I mean, how does this work sure. with $150 million? Think of it like rent. Think of it like salaries. Think of it like advertising. It's one more cost of doing business. So basically, in, in reality, a good part of it is taken up by the real taxes paid to the government. And if you're talking about here in California, half of it would have gone to the government anyway. So normally when you, you look at numbers in California for any team, you figure, okay, it really cost them half of that. Because if they didn't, they'd give half in taxes. So, okay, so Oklahoma City's basically on the hook for $150 million in luxury tax. Right. How, how can, is there a ways that they can ameliorate that, you know, through the government at all? Or is it, I mean, can well, they write off some of that 150 as an operating expense? Sure, they write off all of it. So basically, okay. for example, depending on what your effective tax rate is, for most people, especially here in California, it's approximately half, you figure... 75 of that is savings and taxes. So if the Warriors were paying 150, it would really only cost them 75. Oh, well, then they're flush. See, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, it, I mean, who doesn't have 75 mil laying around? Well, Kelly has. I know that. Oh, yeah. Me and Papa. But, yeah, Ray only has 50. Talk to me after the show. Yeah. I have to work on your we'll taxes. We'll talk. Uh, Ruben Foster, 49ers linebacker, suspended uh, two games without pay by the NFL uh, for his various transgressions with uh, a weapons charge, which was dropped to misdemeanor and a uh, misdemeanor marijuana charge. Um, he's going to lose 103000 of his scheduled salary of uh, just over 875000 Does that adjust, then, uh, his taxes when, when he loses that money? Now, it, it, does he pay less taxes on his yes, sum? Yes, because he didn't get the money. So suppose, for example, he was due 800000 and he only gets 600000 Then he pays taxes on six hundred. So he doesn't write off what he lost because he never got the money. That's true of any job. If you go ahead and you're not paid... Regard, even if your boss says, you know what, you make a million dollars a week, if the boss doesn't pay you, your tax on not being paid is zero. Mm -hmm. um, somehow I would have thought Donald Trump would have taken care of NFL fines so that loophole couldn't be used. You know, you would think, but again, it's, you're talking about fines are treated differently than other things. Fines are generally not deductible, but you're seeing a, a fine is normally imposed by a governmental body. So if the employer says you have to pay it, usually that's something different.
Uh, moving on to uh, Gary and Conley. Uh, as we know, before last year's draft, uh, he was accused of raping a woman in a hotel in Cleveland. Uh, those charges were dropped, but she proceeded with a civil lawsuit, and now he is suing her back, uh, saying that she made false statements, damaged his reputation, hurt his draft stock, which she did, and cost him multiple endorsement deals. Yes. Apparently, one with Nike that would have been very lucrative. How, uh, in terms of a civil lawsuit uh, is this going to, how tough is this going to be to win because he he clearly lost money yes he did and also he chose to sue outside of california jurisdiction he's suing in is less stringent than california but basically this is called malicious prosecution so if somebody wrongfully sues you you're entitled to sue them back for your damages and that's what he's doing so in theory that's terrific because he lost all kinds of monies because of the false allegations However, in practicality, if the defendant, the woman here, doesn't have any money, it doesn't matter, and he's just wasting his own money. But the reason he did it in the jurisdiction in which he filed, there was only a year statute of limitations getting ready to run. Here in California, it would have been two. So basically what he did is he went ahead and he said, okay, I'm going to file this, so if you get anything in the upcoming years, I'll take it away from you. But then you have to say, well, wait a minute, could you discharge this in bankruptcy? Mm -hmm. So. I wouldn't be writing any checks on that money just yet if I were he. This could, this could hold up in court. They're both suing each other. So this could be a while to play out. Well, it could. But again, the, the practical matter, as an attorney, when somebody comes in and says, I want to sue, people always come in, I want to sue this guy. Well, well, do they have any money? And normally what we'll do is we'll send a private investigator. And if somebody doesn't have any money, I said, you're wasting your money in a lawsuit. I won't take a case like that. All right. As always, good to see you. Pleasure was mine. Thanks Steve so Moskowitz. much. Steve Moskowitz. Uh, coming up next on the Happy Hour, we're talking baseball. The Oakland A's, nine games over 500. Yes, nine games. What's that going to do come the uh, trade deadline? Are they going to be buyers, sellers? We'll discuss that next on the Happy Hour.